Today, we're starting in the heart of Boston because we are taking Amtrak's most popular train. So we're starting here at South Station. We're gonna ride through how many states? Eight states and one district. That's a lot. It's a long day. I'm Mike, welcome to Downey Live. Now let's go ride Amtrak's most popular train. Our train today leaves at 6.10 a.m. So if you're wondering how I know this is Amtrak's most popular train, it's because I got the 2019 ridership numbers in the Northeast Regional. Got 8.9 million riders in 2019. Second place only got 3.5. More than doubled the second place train. So today we're gonna see what that looks like. Because it's long, I got us business class. Compared to other Amtrak stations, Boston South Station here isn't very grand feeling. And it doesn't have much of a waiting room either. That's about it, not a lot of seating in here, but now's a really good time to tell you that today's video is sponsored by the High Speed Rail Alliance. It's a growing organization connecting governments with businesses, with citizens and rail fans like ourselves to bring high speed rail to America. High speed rail has been proven to be an effective and efficient way of moving people and connecting communities around the world and the High Speed Rail Alliance has a multi-track plan to integrate it and implement it here in America. You see, this station, Boston South Station, connects riders to New York and Washington DC by high-speed train already, the Amtrak Acela. But we want more of it. In fact, they're America's largest high-speed rail advocacy group, and their members support it. So you can learn more about them at their website, which is highspeedrail.us, which is an awesome URL. But more importantly, you can help them by going to the website and signing the petition because they need your help to tell governments that we want more High Speed Rail. So thank you High Speed Rail Alliance for sponsoring today's video, but also working hard for us to bring us better and faster trains. Don't forget, go sign the petition at highspeedrail.us. All right. That was our call for our train, let's go catch it. Now when I was talking about ridership numbers, second place is the Acela, but we're not taking that today. We're taking the most popular route, which is the Northeastern Regional. Yes, 11A. That's how the Canadians say 11. Now last week we took Amtrak's least popular train and had the same type of seats. We don't quite have a window seat today. But I'd like to point out that the amount of leg room you get in these things is incredible. Now we have more window, and we are leaving right on time. Now looking at a map, it's obvious why this train is so popular. It connects four of the biggest cities in America. And on board we can see why so many people would choose to travel this way. It's comfortable, it's spacious, and allows you to get work done while you travel. Although I'm really wishing I had chosen a seat with a proper window, not just a post. We'll make 30 stops across 450 miles or so, and it will take us less than eight hours to do it. We've only been riding for five minutes. We've already reached our first stop. I think we're gonna make a lot today. Now, looking around, I'm a little confused. I thought this was the most popular train, but at the moment, the car is pretty empty. And Boston is not a small town. So where is everybody? So far, the train is pretty quiet. It's always a good sign when you're faster than the cars on the highway. Yeah, considering this is not a high-speed train, we're flying. 110 miles per hour? Remember, this isn't even Amtrak's highest speed train, the Acela. So I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed by this old train. I mean, we will take an hour longer than if we had taken the Acela, but most of that is due to the fact that we stop at twice as many stations. But we're not here to see the fastest train. We're here to see the busiest train. And here comes our next station. And in just 35 minutes, we've not only arrived in our first major city, but our second state. We're now in Providence, Rhode Island. It's my first time ever here. And uh, I don't think we're gonna stop here for long, so I'll hop back on. This train really is a lot more of a commuter train, taking people from the suburbs to big cities, but not most people ride from tip to tip like we are today. And on we go. Rhode Island's a pretty small state, so I think we're gonna hit our third state pretty quickly. Come on. Yeah, I think that's about all of Rhode Island we'll get to see. Now let's go see what the cafe car has for us. That car is three cars up. Sweet honey. It's the same type of snack car as we had in last week's video. But let's see what we can wrangle up for some breakfast here. And if you ride business class, you get free drinks with your ticket, so orange juice is free. But I managed to find a fruit cup and a vanilla yogurt with blueberries and granola. A vanilla yogurt parfait. I gotta admit, that's a pretty good looking parfait. What are you filming? A YouTube video. Oh, cool. Yeah. While I eat my $9.50 breakfast, let me show you why this route is unique to the Amtrak network. If we look up, we can see the overhead electric wires above the tracks. 
That's because the route we're taking today is one of the few stretches of track actually owned by Amtrak. While Amtrak normally runs on freight tracks across America, here in the Northeast Corridor, they own 730 miles of track, including 17 tunnels and over a thousand bridges. And so we're riding on Amtrak's own tracks here, which means fewer delays. Well, at least until we get to Washington, D.C. Why is it that the healthy options are always the most expensive? Oh. What a moment. Holy, and then that was the fastest opening I've ever seen. And now, we've just entered Connecticut. And doesn't this just look like the most Connecticut day you've ever seen? I've never been to Connecticut before, but apparently it has the highest earning per capita and the highest median household income in the United States. And it kind of looks like it. The reason I really want to do this trip is because I don't know any other way that you could see this many states as quickly or as comfortably as this. I mean, this is already our third state of the day and I haven't even finished my coffee yet. Now, I'm looking around and this train still isn't very busy. I mean, this is a Thursday morning commute. I expected more people on board. In fact, if we do the math, <clears throat> 8,940,745 passengers in a day, divided by 365 days a year, divided by eight trains a day going in both directions, so actually 16 trains a day, means you have an average of 1,530 passengers per train. And right now, I look around, I think there are maybe eight of us in here. So am I expecting another 1,422 passengers to join us on this route today? Maybe more will board at the next station. So I was just told if you use the Amtrak app, you can actually change your seat. So I'm just checking to see if there's a window seat available still in business class here. There aren't any available but I can see there's no one seated next to me for the rest of the trip, so that's a plus. New Haven, Connecticut, a foggy New England day. I've never been to Connecticut before. I don't know if I expected this. It is starting to get busier though. I'm starting to see why this is the most popular route, because there's a lot of stops at big towns like this. A lot of people getting on and off. I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to really like this fog. I mean, look at the bridge in the distance. This just feels like it's welcoming us to New York. And there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, New York City. So if you haven't figured out already, this isn't like Amtrak's long haul cross country trains where you board once at the beginning and ride the train all the way to the end. It's a commuter train with people getting on and off all along the route, meaning Amtrak can sell that single seat ticket multiple times throughout the journey. I'm the oddity riding it from end to end. I mean, this seat next to me could have three different passengers in it by the time I get off. And I think that's what helps make this Amtrak's most ridden train. Of course, the Acela, which is just passing us here, even though it's faster, it only makes half as many stops, which, which is maybe why it gets half as many passengers. Wait a minute, this tunnel is awfully familiar from last week. In case you miss it, I did ride Amtrak's least popular train. So if you enjoy these train adventure videos, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's. New York City Penn Station. We were here just last week because this was the starting point of Amtrak's least used train. And now the most popular train stops here too. So we're here for a couple of minutes at Penn Station. We just got an announcement to clear stuff off the seat next to you because they have a huge crowd coming on board because not only is New York City a big station, but we're headed to a couple more big cities. Philadelphia, Washington, DC, Baltimore before that. So uh, it's all aboard at this point. But we're really not here that long. And that's it, in and out of Penn Station in just a couple of minutes with a now full train. And if you think about it, we just stopped at the busiest station in North America. And so it really is starting to make sense that this train is the most popular, especially because New York City is the halfway point of this trip, meaning it gets passengers both arriving and leaving from New York City. I mean, that's gotta be the reason the ridership is so high. And we're now in New Jersey. Speaking of being halfway, I'm getting hungry, and I just read online that Amtrak has new menu options. Okay, I will try the new Grilled chicken bacon ranch wrap, please. So Amtrak is trying to make their meals healthier and I decided to try it. This new wrap isn't mind blowing by any chance, but it's a wrap and it tastes exactly as it should. And it's definitely a lot better than the microwaved hamburgers and hot dogs they used to serve. And it's probably a lot healthier too. I'd, I'd get it again. Still no passenger next to me, excellent. But our window scenario hasn't changed. Now we're picking up a bit of speed here. So let's speed up the video too. 
Not much happened as we passed through New Jersey, except a woman had a dog in her purse, and then we arrived in our fifth state of the day. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's a station where everything's wet, but you're covered and you wonder why, and the uh, ceiling is dripping a little bit in here. We're just flying through these states. We continued through Pennsylvania and raced a cargo ship for a little bit, smoked them, and arrived in our sixth state. We're now in Delaware. I enjoyed the smooth and fast tracks all the way into our seventh state. And now we've just entered Maryland. I'm losing track of the number of states we're going through. Now we're coming into the city of Baltimore and I have to say that I do enjoy these little adventures, but I just traveled across seven states and I didn't get out and experience any of them. So this is my announcement that I'm starting a bigger and more exciting train adventure. I'm traveling from America's most southern train station to America's most northern train station while riding along 10 of America's most unique, interesting, and incredible trains along the way. I mean, what better way is there to see this country than by train? It's a 10 episode series, so if you're new here and you've made it this far in the video, this is your cue to subscribe so you don't miss season two of Downey Live Travels by Train America. Oh, it's warm. Now we're in Baltimore, Maryland. That's about it. I think we're just letting some people off. I don't see many getting on. All right, we're getting off at the next stop. Okay, back to this train. It's not the fastest or the most scenic or even the cheapest, but it does connect a lot of people in a fast and comfortable way between large cities. So I should probably correct myself and not say it's the most popular, but simply the train with the highest ridership in the country. So if you're looking for a fun train adventure, well, this probably isn't the one for you except maybe in New Jersey. But if you live along the Northeast Corridor, this is probably the train for you. And that's it. We've arrived in Washington, D.C. Woo! Gee, bit of weather here. Oh my goodness. This might be the most impressive train station I've ever seen. They don't make them like they used to. Thanks for joining me on this trip. I'm Mike, the channel is Downy Live, and I make these videos every single Saturday. So you can go watch last Saturday's video when I traveled on Amtrak's least favorite train. See you next week. I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See ya.